discussing the intrepid pair over a cup of tea. And Enoch's wife said, had Enoch's as sapped as a bottle of pop? And Eli's wife said, well, Eli's as daft as a brush. And then they started discussing which one of them was the most gullible. Well, they couldn't agree, so they set out to prove which one of them is the most gullible? So that afternoon, when Enoch came back from work, he walked into the kitchen and he, he sniffed and he couldn't, he couldn't smell no food uh, cooking. He says, hey up me wench, what's for tay? He says, bread and dripping. He says, bread and dripping? Yeah, I'm joking. He says, I'm a working man. I need meat and taters, me. I said, well, that's all there is. Take it or leave it. He says, in that case, I'm going down the pub. I'm going to meet one of them big mate pies and a pint of beer. And at that, he went out the kitchen and he slammed the door behind him. A couple of minutes later, he was back. He says, hey, went, you, you couldn't lend me a few bob, could you? I says, no, got no money. I says, what? He says, what's going on here? I want to know. I go out to work, I turns me money up on Friday, and here you am. You've got no food in the house, and you've got no money. Now, what's going on? I says, well, it's like this. I was coming home today, and I come up across this poor bloke in the street. He'd been set upon by robbers, knocked him about, something terrible they had. So I brought him home and I fixed him up a bit of first aid, you know, and a cup of tea. And anyway, he told me his story. And this bloke is a tailor from Savile Row. And he'd come here to the black country to collect a bolt of cloth to make a suit for one of the royal families. He don't say which one it was, but I've got a good idea which one it was. Anyway, I give him all our money so we could get back up to London and make that suit. And in return, he's given me a few yards of that wonderful cloth. I says, here, what do you think of it? And the other arms out like that. Well, I ain't not looked at it, and he thought, me, I can't see anything. Now, well, hang on a minute. I've heard a story like this. Now, how did it go? And that's right. If you couldn't see it, you was a fool. Every day went to look a fool, and he says, Oh, that's all right, that is. I says, Well, I'm going to get on with it right away. And then I thought, I wish I could remember the end of that story. How does he go? But he couldn't remember. Anyway, I cleared the table, I got a sewing machine out, and I started cutting, snipping, measuring, and stitching away there. And he watched it for a bit, and he thought, I wish I could remember the end of that story. After a bit, he had his bread and dripping, and he went off to bed. Well, next morning, when he woke up, he come down, and he's still going at it. Stitching away, and then he looked. I wish I could remember the end of that story. Anyway, off he went to work. Now, meanwhile, round at Eli's house, Eli had woke up that morning, and his wife was sitting at the side of the bed, and was weeping and wringing her arms. And he said, Hey, up, me went, what's up we you? He says, It's you. He says, well, What have I done now? He says, You've died in the night. Oh. He 
is up, Jed. This is all. He said, well, I never. And I started crying again. He said, look, calm down, my wench. I'll go and make us a cup of tea. I said, no, you go, young Jed. He says, the undertaker's on his way. You're going to wait there. I said, what's it? Now, that afternoon, when I not come back from work, he walked in the kitchen, and as he did, his missus said, I'm just in time. I've just finished that suit. And I held up a coat hanger. And he looked at it and he thought, I wish I could remember the end of that story. <laughs> and he says, come on, get your clothes off, get your working clothes off and try it on. So he took his working clothes off and uh, they gave him the trousers and so he put them on. I said, well, do the flyers up. You can't go around looking like that, can you? So, well, you know, I said, how do they feel? He says, well, he says, I've got to admit it's uncomfortable. He says, I don't even know I've got them on. I said, come on then. He says, on with the waistcoat. Now, we'll hold him on. I helped him on with the waistcoat. And I did the buttons before he knocked him out a bit there. And I brushed a bit of lint off the side, you know. And then the jacket and on went the jacket. He put the jacket on. I stepped back and said, Oh, that looks lovely, eh? And I says, How does it feel? He says, I don't know. This is the summit room. I says, Is that cap? I says, And I grabbed his cap and I chucked it into the corner. I said, I've made you a cap out of that same material. And I placed it on his head, just at that jaunty angle that he always used to wear it. And I step back and I says, Enoch, you do look a dandy. He says, Do I? I says, Oh, I says, Yo. I says, I can see why I married you then. I says, Oh, I says, I says, It's a shame about that, I lie, though, ain't it? He says, I lie. He says, What's up with that, I lie? He says, Do you know? I says, No. He says, He died in the night. I says, hey, lawyers, Jed. I says, oh, I says, I'll tell you what. Why don't you go round and pay your last respects while you've got your new suit on? <laughs> <laughs> so off he went round to hey, lawyers. He knocked on the door and hey, lawyers' wife took him in into the front room there and there was the coffee. He walked up to the coffin and hey, lawyer popped up. He said, all right, hey, not. Hey, not. said, all right, I knock you a ninny omer, he says. I thought you was Jed. He says, I am Jed. He says, oh, he says, if you're Jed, how come you can speak? And I says, I did wonder about that. <laughs> but I've never been Jed before, have I? <laughs> anyway, he says, he says, says you're yeah, my good one. Call him me a ninny omer. He says, who's the ninny omer? Since when have you been going around with no clothes on? He says, what do you mean? He says, I've got my new suit on. Ha <laughs> ha, he said, if you've got your new suit on then, he says, let's see you stick your thumbs in your waistcoat pocket, like you do when you're looking for your pigeons to come up. Well, that's a great pair of ninny omens. But did they prove which one of them? was the most global, did it? So what I thought I'd do was ask you a lot. <laughs> I've been looking at you a lot here, I mean, come on. I know it's Thursday night, but I mean, you could be down the road at the Mecca playing bingo, couldn't you? There might be something decent on the telly. Well, there might be. But I mean, there's surely there's something better to do than sit around listening to me tell saff stories, eh? <laughs> <laughs>